Let's um, look at this allowable stress design uh, example. Uh, we've got these beams right here uh, with these loads applied. Uh, we're kind of told all of the forces, uh, and we want to determine the required thickness of member BC, the diameter of the pins at A, um, and the diameter of the pins at B. All right, so this is one of those problems where you're given all the forces, you know all the loads, you want to size these correctly and see, you know, what 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 can I get away with? What, you know, what size pins do I need? What thickness of this um, member BC do I need? All right, so uh, this uh, member BC is not a circular member. It is a rectangular member that has this dimension of 1.5, so maybe um, this dimension right here is 1.5 but we want to know what thickness T does this um, member BC have. Uh, and then we also want to know the diameter of the pins at A and B. And if you notice, B uh, is uh, in double shear, right? A is in single shear. All right. And it tells us the sigma, the failure stress, the normal, so this is normal failure stress, uh, and this is shear failure stress, or sorry, that's shear allowable, let's be careful, uh, so it gives us the, the maximum stresses that we can have, it tells us to use a factor of safety of two. Okay, uh, with these problems, if you're given all the forces, actually, actually, almost all of these types of allowable stress design problems, there's going to be a, a statics problem before we even get started. All right, so I'm going to look at this uh, as if it was a statics problem and kind of solve for what I can or, or maybe go as far as I can um, carrying variables through if I need to. All right, so if this was a problem in statics class, I would notice that this is pinned and pinned. Uh, so this is a two-force member. So I can replace two-force member with just one force along that direction, pin to pin. All right, let me draw the free body diagram over here of member AB. Free body diagram of member AB. All right, and I've got this force in two-force member BC. I'm going to replace this uniform distributed load with one force acting at the centroid of that distributed load. Um, it is, let's see, two kips per foot times eight feet, right, base times height. Uh, 16 kips would be the force that I replace it with right at the middle there. Uh, this would be at 60 degrees. This is, sorry, 4 feet. This is 4 feet here. All right, now I've got a pin at A, so I'm going to say I might have an AX and an AY. Now, from static equilibrium, I can sum the forces in X. I can sum the forces in Y. I can sum the moments. See if you can do this uh, real quickly. F, B, C, cosine 60 plus A, X equals 0. So A, X is negative 4.619. Uh, that negative means it was not to the right. It was actually to the left. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up here. Let me back up. I couldn't have solved that right away. Sorry. Uh, that equation had two unknowns. Let me go to the next equation. Uh, in the y direction, FBC sine 60 plus AY minus 16 equals 0. I can't solve that one uh, either just yet. Uh, let me sum the moments. You know, think about, you can sum the moments about any point. Think about which point would be the best uh, to sum the moments about. If you sum the moments about A, then AX and AY uh, don't show up in that equation. So I'm going to do that. Summing the moments about A, I've got 16 kips. Four feet away, creating a, that would create a positive moment. And then FBC, I could break this up into its two components. This component right there would go straight through A, so that wouldn't contribute to the moment. But this other component right here, the FBC sine 60 component, is acting eight feet away, creating a negative moment. Set that equal to zero. All right, so here I can start solving. FBC, I would get 9.238 kips 
plug that back in right there, I would get AY is 8 kips. Uh, and plug that back in up there, I would get AX negative 4.619 kips. Uh, so it's actually 4.619 to the left instead of to the right. Okay. Do your statics problem. You know, I just did my statics problem. I drew my free body diagram. I wrote my equilibrium equations. I, I, and and th these types of problems, if, you're, if you know all the forces and all the loads, you can go ahead and solve for the forces right there straight from statics. Okay, so we need to size. We need to figure out what is the required thickness of member BC. So I need to think about BC. Think about how BC might fail Okay, BC might fail just due to tension or compression, just due to a normal uh, stress. Uh, member BC, I need to consider um, normal stress failure and make sure that it doesn't fail due to normal stress. I don't have to worry about shear stress because this member is not in shear at all, actually. Um, so most of these, you know, cables or members like this, two force members, we need to consider normal failure. Okay, what did it tell me about the normal fa failure? It said 58 KSI. Sigma fail is 58 KSI. That's the failure stress. How much am I going to allow? I need, I'm going to use the factor of safety. And remember, factor of safety equals sigma fail over sigma allowable. I'm going to use a factor of safety of 2 uh, is 58 KSI over sigma allowable. All right, so I'm only going to allow it to get up to a 29 KSI. All right, so let's calculate it. If it gets up to 29 KSI, I know that uh, normal stress is N over A. So let me go ahead and set 29 KSI equal to N. What would the N be for this member right here? Uh, well, it's just the force. It's just FBC that I calculated, 9.238. So this would be 9.238 kips. And don't worry about kips. Kips is a, a unit of, of force. It's a 1,000 pounds. Uh, just make sure units on the left equal the units on the right. All right, and the area. The area for normal stress... Now, if this was circular, the area would be this diameter, or that, that circular area, but this is a rectangular area, so the area would be, I know one dimension is 1.5 of that rectangle, the other dimension is T, the thickness that we want to find. So I would get this thickness to be 0.212 inches, sorry, sorry, 0.212 inches. So at least this is the minimum that I can get away with. So if, if, if I didn't have it, many options, you know, if I had point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, I'd need point 0.3, right? If you have to choose between certain sizes, that's the minimum. You need to make sure you're above that minimum. All right, so that is the minimum thickness, uh, at least required thickness for member BC. Now let's look at the pins. Let's look at the pins. All right, so for pins, let me look at pin A. For pin A, I need to consider um, shear stress, right? For pins, the most common failure for pins is going to be shear stress failure. Now, if told, if I ask you to consider bearing failure, then you might also need to consider bearing stress failure. Um, so if I tell you, hey, the bearing, the bearing failure is you know, whatever, uh, 100 KSI, then you need to consider it. But um, for this problem, we're not going to worry about that uh, because I wasn't told any bearing stress fair. I wasn't told to calculate it. 
Uh, we're just going to worry about the shear stress failure for pin A. So what is the V, the shear force, at pin A? What is the shear force at pin A? Well, at A, I have this right here acting. Both of these are acting at A, AX and AY. I can combine those. It's really just one force acting right at A. So the force acting at A, uh, so the force at A is 8 squared and 4.619 squared. Take the square root. It is 9.238. Now, uh, this will, we've already seen that number right there in FBC. Those are definitely not always going to be the same. You can really kind of look at it and figure out why they're the same. They're the same because we have this very symmetric problem and if we have if this is right in the middle and this is right here we're actually going to have to have the same thing on the other side so it's it's the same because it's symmetric but most problems are not symmetric most problems you you won't ever you know get the same forces at different locations uh, but anyway i needed to calculate the force at a by taking ax and ay all right, so that's the force at A, 9.238. Now, is that the shear force at A? A is in single shear. All right, A is in single shear. If it is in single shear, th then yes, uh, V is 9.238 kips. Okay, if it was in double shear, it would be half of that. But it's in single shear, so V is 9.238 kips. All right, so if it has that uh, force, that shear force, and I know the shear, uh, the allowable stress, then I can find the V, sorry, I can find the A uh, of the pin. I can find the diameter of the pin. All right, now, uh, normally I, I, would, I would consider a factor of safety I um, mean, you know, if I've got a factor of safety of two, then you know I don't want it to to get all the way up. But uh, this is a pretty um, got, you've got to be paying attention. They didn't tell me the failure shear stress like they like they told me the failure normal stress. They told me the allowable. So they already kind of considered the factor of safety. All right, so. The, they've already calculated the tau allowable um, that I'm going to allow, okay? All right, so this would be 10 KSI equals a shear force of 9.238 kips over the area. What is the area that a shear force is acting for over for a pin? It's the circle the circular area, pi by 4, the diameter of the pin right there. So I could calculate the diameter of pin A, 1.085 inches. That is the minimum diameter. That's a min at least 1.058. 1.085. Okay. All right, now let's consider pin B. Again, I'm going to consider shear stress failure at pin B. What is the force at pin B? Well, the force at pin B is this force inside of the um, member BC. It's just FBC. I've already calculated it. Uh, it is 9.238 kips. That is the force at B, but what is the shear force at P, at B? This one was in double shear, so the shear force at B is 9.238 over 2. Okay, because this was in double shear, because this was in double shear, I, what I've got here, I've got the force in BC right here, but I've got two V's counteracting it. Whereas right here, I've got, you know, the force at A, and I've only got one V.
counteracting it. So uh, this one is 9.238 divided by 2. And I already know the tau allowable equals V over A. So 10 KSI equals 9.238 over 2 divided by the area pi by 4 diameter of pin B squared. So here I would get the diameter of pin B 0.767 inches. That is the minimum diameter for pin B. Alright, so let's kind of go back over this and look at what we did. This was a type of problem where I know all the loads and I'm trying to find some sizes, some diameters, some thicknesses. I do my statics part of the problem right here in order to solve for the forces that are acting at the pins, the forces that are in the rods. And then I consider I consider, you know, all the all the types of failures. Well, that rod could fail due to being pulled too much, due to a, a normal stress being too large. So I calculated what thickness equaled the stress that I was going to allow it to get up to. So that would be the minimum thickness. Then I considered pin A. I just considered shear failure. I knew it was I, I knew the force at pin A. I knew it was in single shear. And so I, I wanted to calculate the diameter that would give it an allowable stress of 10 KSI. And then I did the same thing for pin B. I knew the force at pin B, but it was in double shear, so I divided by two, and then I found the diameter that would give a shear stress at pin B of 10 KSI because that's the only, that's the maximum I'm going to allow the shear stress to get up to for pin B. And so here I've got my values that I've calculated for the diameters of pin A, diameter for pin B, and the uh, thickness of the rod.